There are a lot of critical role player characters, but which one is the best, objectively, based on my opinion? Today we're going to be doing one of those fancy tier lists that YouTube seems to really like for some reason. I'm going to be ranking all of the major critical role player characters from S tier to D tier. And a quick disclaimer here, I don't actually dislike any of the critical role PCs. I just think some are better than others, more interesting than others, and more to my personal tastes. So let's get into it. All right, and here's our tier list. S is the highest, D is the lowest, and here we have all all of our lovely critical role uh, player characters. I almost said NPCs, player characters. And we're starting with Keyleth of the Air Ashari. Keyleth is a Marisha's character from the first critical role campaign, campaign one. And there was a lot of controversy around Keyleth uh, and, and Marisha specifically during the campaign. Uh, and most of it was unwarranted in my opinion and some of it was just that marisha was not as strong of a role player as the other people at the table uh but that is not necessarily uh, that's not necessarily anything to do with uh like her as an actor or a role player it was just she was a lot younger than everybody else and hadn't been doing this as long so i think she sort of got out outshined a little bit uh, but I think she's improved a lot. I still think Keyleth is a great character. I really like how insecure she is. I like the journey she goes on. I like that she has a goal uh, in mind. She wants to complete her trials, her Aramente, uh, throughout the story. So I'm really, really, I really, really like Keyleth. Uh, I'm inclined to put her definitely in the top half here. Now, if this were the Keyleth from Legend of Vox Machina, Easy yes. I love Keyleth in Legend of Vox Machina, but I do think she is a stronger character in Legend of Vox Machina than she is in the first campaign of Critical Role. That said, I still think she is a very easy A. And next up, we have Ashton Graymore, Taliesin's character uh, from Campaign 3. Uh, Ashton is an uh, Earth Genasi barbarian, I believe, and they it seems they there's a lot of mysteries regarding their origins. They have this weird crystal in their head, and they are very much a representation of the punk subculture. That's something Taliesin really really likes to do with his characters is represent different like uh subcultures like he's done like uh sort of gothic with percy uh hippie with caduceus and um and molly mox more like a more like a carny i guess straight off the bat Ashton doesn't really match my sensibilities just because I'm not really big on the whole punk aesthetic. It's just not really my thing. And Ashton for a long time I just bothered me. I just did not like them whatsoever. But recently on a four-sided dive, Taliesin talked about like how he was actually specifically playing Ashton uh, with low charisma, being unlikable, and being uh, very um, off-putting and like not very in tune with his own body or emotions. And that made me like Ashton more. That said, I still do find Ashton pretty grating. So I'm going to put Ashton in C tier. And next up is Jester Lavor, Laura Bailey's character in Campaign 2. Jester is a cleric of the Traveler, uh, whose identity is revealed within Campaign 2. Uh, and it's a very fun reveal. I love her relationship with the Traveler. I love her um, absolute uh, love of chaos. I love uh, her accent. She's a lot of fun. She is one of the absolute best moments in Critical Role history with the hag if you know you know um and i think jester is uh I, I don't know if i'll have jester all the way up in s tier i think she's pretty close to top of a tier though fern calloway ashley johnson's character in uh campaign three fern is a circle of wildfire druid uh who is uh, a fawn i believe fawn or satyr i'm not exactly sure which term they they went with uh but fern is extremely chaotic constantly stealing things and at one point uh, despite just always getting the party into trouble and always stealing things and always just making the most chaotic decisions at some point she was discussing with Erica Ishii's character uh, how she 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 really just needs to like stop letting other people's opinions like hold her back or whatever which I thought was really really funny uh, moment and commentary on the character herself. Uh, Fern has a really fascinating backstory with uh, her parents sort of abandoning ba abandoning her and her growing up with like this weird creepy but awesome two-headed hag uh i really really like fern um i don't think i like her as much as keyleth or jester um i think she's gonna be up there for me though i think i'm gonna put her in a tier not the brave also known as veth 
Uh, Not is Sam's character in Campaign 2, and she is a goblin rogue who also has a very, very dramatic backstory, as was, as is a theme in D&D games in general, but as is a theme especially in campaign two of critical role i'm not going to be doing too much spoiling uh but not the brave has a really really fascinating uh sort of rebirth in the game uh into sort of a new character and i absolutely i, I love that story i think it was really strong uh but outside of that specific story and Knot's relationship with caleb i just didn't find her particularly compelling once that story is sort of done uh this is sort of a problem i think across critical roles second campaign is a lot of characters have really really compelling storylines and then once those arcs are done they are just sort of there for the rest of it and that's sort of a weakness in a couple of these characters specifically i think not is suffers from uh that a uh, fair bit uh but i still really like not i think uh not is a solid b imogen temelt uh, Laura Bailey's character in Campaign 3. Uh, on paper, Imogen has the makings of a really, really great character. Uh, she's tied directly into the plot of the campaign. She has a really interesting backstory. She has relationships uh, with NPCs like out of the gate. She has her parents. She has other folks that she has relationships with. And there's a really great role player uh, behind her uh, in Laura Bailey. Uh, but so far, um, in the way Laura plays her, I get she's playing, she's very much like playing the everyman sort of character, like the, the ordinary person in extraordinary circumstances, and I appreciate that. Um, but I don't think it's working as well as it could. Maybe, uh, in the second half of the campaign, campaign three, uh, she'll pull something that makes, uh, whoops, she'll pull something that makes, um, Imogen a more interesting character. Uh, and I don't think she's an uninteresting character. I think she's got a lot got a lot going on. Um, but I'm I'm just struggling to uh, find something that I really like about her besides her relationship with Laudna, if that makes sense. I really like how she's tied into the main story. I'm really loving the Ruidus arc. I love how connected she is to it. But it feels like she's not really driving that story. She's just sort of being swept along. She doesn't really have a whole lot of agency in that in that situation, um, aside from choosing to pursue it. Uh, so I'm gonna put I'm gonna put uh, Imogen in B. And next up we have Chetney Pocket B, Travis's uh, Travis's permanent character <laughs> in uh, Campaign Three. He is a uh, gnome rogue based on <laughs> based on a character that Travis played in a Critical Role one shot. I can't remember what it was called, but it was one of the Christmas themed ones where he tries to kill Santa, which is a, a very very funny one shot that that you guys should check out if you haven't seen it. Chetney is a character I've mixed feelings on. Because, one, he's very, very funny. I love uh, the concept. I love sort of... Uh, did I say Gnome Rogue? I did say Gnome Rogue. He's introduced as a Gnome Rogue. We'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> There's a lot of fun reveals. I think Travis is obviously having a ton of fun playing him. Uh, but I find Chetney a little bit too silly for my taste. I totally get why people love him. He's hilarious. He's got... Uh, I, I love the jokes about him being old. How Travis is constantly ma joking about making rolls to see whether or not he dies in the night just from sheer age. But he doesn't really feel like he fits in this campaign to me. He's just sort of an old gnome who's there, who's not really connected to anything or anyone. I don't know. I feel like there could be more there. And we are learning a little bit more about him in the more recent episodes. I'm on uh, episode 52 as of now. But to me, at least... He just feels very out of place, and that that that, that sort of uh, it sort of pushes me away from him a little bit. So I'm gonna put him in B. Next up is a Beauregard Lionet, Marisha's character from Campaign Two, and uh, I love Bo. <laughs> I think Bo is a really great character. I think she has a fantastic or uh, arc across the campaign, and I think that she stays relevant from from session one to the final episode. And I think that is kind of what makes a great character. She has a lot of really complicated relationships built into her backstory that come up dur during it. But she also has uh, motivation throughout. She has uh, an organization that she's not sure if she wants to be a part of. But like, uh, and she she grows gro goes on sort of a self uh, journey, uh, learning, like taking in what they teach, sort of finding her own way within that organization. And I think she's uh, just a really fascinating character. I think uh, Bo is probably Marisha's best character, in my opinion. Um, which is saying a lot because I, I love Marisha's characters. Um, I, I, spoiler for the video, but I think all of them are going to be at least A tier. Uh, but personally, I'm going to put Bo as my first S tier character. I absolutely adore Bo. And uh, next up is 
Tiberius Stormwind. Now, uh, Tib Tiberius uh, carries with him a lot of baggage, as uh, there was a very complicated situation in the first season of Critical Role. Um, when the first, like, quarter or, like, uh, 24, 25 episodes, uh, there was another cast member on Critical Role by the name of Orion Akaba. Uh, and I'm not gonna go into the details of that situation. Uh, Super Geek Mike made a really great vi video about it called, uh, Let's Talk About Tiberius. If you're interested in the situation, you can check that video out. Uh, but Tiberius, I don't know, I'm not crazy about. And I might just not be crazy about Tiberius because of the surrounding situation. But there was many times where I found him very charming and very funny, but I also found him very annoying. Uh, and that might not be the character's fault, that might be the player's fault. Um, but either way, I think Tiberius is going to be my first D tier, just because that whole situation is uncomfortable and sort of has stained the legacy of the character for me. Orum of the Arishari, Liam's character in Campaign 3. Orum is a uh, halfling fighter. Uh, who is connected to Keyleth uh, in the from the first campaign? He is like one of her bodyguards. He's a, he's a fighter, uh, and he is just this little normal guy who's very wholesome, who has a dramatic backstory, as a, <laughs> as is universal in Liam's characters, especially, and a lot of characters in Critical Role and D and D in general, because like non-traumatized people tend to not go on adventures. <laughs> but uh, Orum, I, I I like Orum quite a lot so far. Uh, he hasn't really done too much, but I like his connection. I like the way Liam plays him. And I really, really love the way Liam flavors uh, how Orum fights. I think Liam has a, a gift for, like, improvising descriptions. He did a lot with Caleb as well, uh, where he would describe Caleb's magic. And that makes Orum... Uh, th that's sort of just a strength of the, of the role player. Um, I really, really like Orum, but so far he hasn't really done too much in the campaign. Um, he hasn't, he doesn't really, hasn't really contributed that much, in my opinion. But also, like Liam said, Orem's just a guy. Orem's just a normal guy who's, he's, he's another, uh, everyman. He's a, he's a person who is, uh, an ordinary person in extraordinary circumstances. Uh, and I, I really like that character trope, and I, I think it works, um, a little better than it does with Imogen. Um, I'm not exactly sure why I can't quite put my finger on it, but I do think I'm gonna put Orem either top of B tier or bottom A tier. I'm going to put him in B tier for now, but I reserve the right to change my mind. And now we have Percival Frederick... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Percival Frederick Steinbaum, Musil Klawalski, the III. There we go. Uh, per, uh, Taliesin's character in uh, Campaign 1. He is a human fighter, gunslinger, uh, and he is the center of one of the best arcs in Critical Role, the Briarwood arc, uh, and he drives that plot. He's a very intense, very personal arc throughout that that uh, that sort of section of the story, uh, and it's a really, really great story. And then after that, he is a fancy lad with a gun, and he doesn't really do too much else. There's some, there's some other very good uh, parts of the story with him, uh, specifically with his uh, sort of relationship with Anna Ripley, uh, and he's still, he's still a lot of fun to watch. He's still, he has, he sells a lot of really fun scenes, uh, but he kind of stops contributing to the story in any major way uh, after the Briarwood arc. He's still contributing, and he still has something to do. It's just he kind of falls off the map a little bit. A, a lot of these characters, I'm, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that with a bunch of different characters, so I'll, I'll stop repeating myself. But still, I really like Percy. I think he's a very fun character. I like how he is the inventor of firearms in this world. Uh, I like his backstory. I like, I really, really like the Briarwood arc. Uh, so at the moment, I'm going to uh, put him in the bottom of A tier. And now we have Vexalia de Rolo. Uh, Vex is a uh, half-elf ranger and rogue, uh, and she is the twin sister of Vaxildan, uh, and if you were to ask me uh, where I would put Vex uh, in during campaign one, I would absolutely 100% put her uh, in A tier. I, I loved Vex. I thought she was a really fun character. Um, but looking back on uh, on campaign one, I found Vex to be kind of boring outside of her relationship with her brother and her relationship with. Percy. She doesn't really have much of, like, a motivation aside from, you know, just being there with her brother and, and Percy. She's still very charming, she's still a lot of fun, and Laura Bailey is a really great role player. so even with a bit of a flat character, she still, uh, makes her a lot of fun to watch, um, but I do think I'm going to put, uh, her 
Uh, right around where I would put Imogen right there in the, in the middle of B. And now we have Bertrand Bell, Travis's character uh, at the beginning of campaign three. Um, I'll be I'll be honest. I'm not crazy about, about Bertrand, which is fine. He doesn't stick around for very long. Uh, he's funny. He, he is uh, somewhat charismatic. And the, again, the joke is he's old. Haha, <laughs> very funny. Um, which I think works better with Chetney than it does with Bertrand. He does serve an important, like, plot sort of focus where he brings the party together and, like, brings them to the first patron. But overall, I'm just, I'm not crazy about Bertrand Bell. I found him pretty annoying in the beginning of Campaign 3. I I, I liked him in Search for Grog, uh, but that was, like, more of a, uh, sort of a, a, a shorter exposure to it. He's, he's, he's good in small doses, but if he stays around too long, I start to get annoyed. So I'm actually going to put him all the way down in D tier. Ah, uh, Caduceus Clay, Travis's second, or not Travis, Taliesin's second character uh, in Campaign 2. And I'll be straight up honest, I'm not going to do the thing where I go up and down a bunch of times. Caduceus Clay is, is my favorite critical role player character, like by a long shot, it's not close. I adore Caduceus Clay in so many different ways. Uh, I love his aesthetic. Uh, I love um, his, I love the way Taliesin plays high uh, wisdom with low intelligence. I love how he is like the perfect support character, both mechanically and in a role play sense. He's like the glue that kept the Mighty Nine together after Molly died. He is one of the absolute best scenes in all of Critical Role in my opinion when he just fully dresses down uh, Trent Ichthon, calling him calling him a fool. I love the way he mentors uh, Ford throughout the story. And I love how his like silly side comes out when he's like interacting with uh, and teasing his siblings. I think that's very charming. He's not super plot relevant. He doesn't have anything going on within the plot itself, but I don't think he needs to because he fills a different niche in the sort of story. If you look at something like Avatar The Last Airbender, uh, Uncle Iroh is who's my favorite character in the show doesn't really have a whole lot of plot relevance, but he is there to help people along their stories. Personally, I'm just a big fan of supporting characters. Uh, I think 90% of the time they are far more interesting than the protagonists or the villains, but that's just sort of my bias. I absolutely adore Caduceus Clay. S tier. Easy. And now we have Laudna. Or Laudna. <laughs> Uh, Ladna is Marisha's character in, uh, Campaign 3, and I think Marisha, I think Ladna has one of the best backstories in all of Critical Role. Uh, I, I don't know, I'm not really gonna go too much into it, because I don't want to spoil it, but she has a connection to Campaign 1, and it's one of the most shocking reveals, uh, both, both her reveal of the backstory and the reveal of what uh, happened to her in campaign one. She's also very fun and very creepy, and I, I love that sort of combination. She's just great. Honestly, Ladna is amazing. I'm 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 loving her so far. She doesn't again. She doesn't have uh, too much plot relevance, but again, she's more of a supporting character in my opinion. I do think the whole like pate thing is a little bit weird, but that sort of plays into the charm because she's very weird. And Marisha is obviously having so much fun playing her. So uh, I'm I think she might be my least favorite Marisha character, but also I as you can see, I I, I love Marisha characters. Um, so I think I'm going to put Ladna in uh, I'm gonna put her in A tier, I think. And now we have Terrian Darrington, uh one of Sam's characters from campaign one. Now, Terrian uh, was a controversial uh figure in a uh within the game at least, uh, because the uh Terrian arrived after a uh event in campaign one um that saw a, lo a lot of drama in game not 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 out of game i don't think he caused any like drama out of game just within the game itself uh his his arrival uh, happened in a very dramatic moment tarion is a human artificer uh and he i don't i i don't care for tarion that much i i feel i, I feel bad saying that but tarion is just kind of he's funny and he's charming um, like, like, ev like most Critical Role characters are, uh, but he's just sort of there, and I think he sort of served a bit of a purpose, um, within Scanlan's arc, which, uh, feels kind of weird to say, I guess, but Tarion just sort of is there to fill space while Scanlan's off doing something else, and I never really got super attached to Tarion. Uh, so I think uh, Tarion is going to join, join Ashton in C tier. Looks like we have another Sam character in Fresh Cut Grass. Uh, the, I think, uh, Warforged or Aormaton, I think his race is. Um, a cleric uh, who is who doesn't really have any memory of his uh, previous existence and thinks he was built by some engineer named Dancer. And uh, FCG is very funny and silly and... Uh, 
I'm not a big fan of SGG, to be perfectly honest. I get why a lot of people like them, but for me, again, SCG feels very, very out of place. Like there's certain there's certain ways that they're tied into the story, so they have a little bit more plot relevance than say Chetney, but I don't know, the, the the like the character concept is it feels very absurd, which is something that I usually like. Uh, but absurd in a way that doesn't really mesh with the rest of the world. I understand the the like the lore and the context around Aormatons, uh, but FCG just sort of feels out very out of left field and just doesn't really mesh super well. I I, I do think uh, they're funny enough and I like their sort of um, mechanics in game regarding like their stress levels. So I don't think I'm gonna put them down in C tier, uh, but I do think they're gonna go in B tier. Uh, Maybe top of C tier? Let's go with top of C tier. And now we have Pike Trickfoot, a gnome cleric played by Ashley Johnson in campaign one. Now, Pike in the first campaign doesn't really have a lot of depth to her. She doesn't have very much plot relevance, but that's because she's a character who's very in and out of the story, um, who could, who is just sort of there when Ashley Johnson could be there because she was off in uh, New York filming a show called Blindspot. Um, so she was not super involved in campaign one, which is a shame because Pike is a fun character. Uh, she's, she's a whole, she's a holy woman, uh, but she's also, uh, uh, like a bit of a degenerate, which is always fun. Um, but again, there's not a whole lot of time to really get attached to her as a character. Um, so I don't dislike her, but I don't have super strong feelings about her either way. So I think I'm going to put her in a B tier. And next up we have Grog Strongjaw, Travis's character from campaign one. Grog is a Goliath barbarian, uh, who in my opinion is one of the funniest characters in Critical Role. I absolutely love his, uh, relationship with Craven Edge. And he also has one of the best moments, one of the best nat 20s and how do, how do you want to do this is, uh, in, in all of Critical Role in my opinion and in, in the kill box. Uh, I, I adore him. I think he's a pretty easy A tier for me. And to be honest, there's not a whole lot to say about Grog. Uh, he's, he's a big, dumb Goliath who, who loves his friends and will do basically anything to protect them and just just really enjoys violence. <laughs> Next up, we have Dorian. I didn't I didn't expect him to be on, on this list, but here he is. Uh, Dorian is a, uh, I believe, is it uh, Air Genasi? Air Genasi. Dorian is Air Genasi. Uh, an Air Genasi bard who was there for a significant number of episodes, probably the longest uh, starring guest on the show uh, as of now. I can't really think of anyone else who was on like the main campaign for uh, as many episodes without being like a prime member of the cast than him. And Dorian's fine. I'm, I'm I'm not crazy about Dorian. I don't have super strong feelings one way or the other. I really like Robbie as as like a performer. Just I feel like his his character was not super interesting. I feel like there wasn't a whole lot of depth to him like at least from my perspective and yeah i just don't really have too much to say about him so i think we're gonna put him probably top of c tier next up is caleb widowgast uh liam's character in campaign two caleb's probably the most tragic character uh, uh, uh in critical role uh of course the most tragic character is played by liam uh he has a very very sad backstory um he he kind of like hates himself i think it would be a good descriptor of how he feels about himself he thinks he's just sort of a bad guy who's not really worth anything but he has this really wonderful uh story of like growing and learning to love his friends and finding that the things that he wanted weren't necessarily what he needed and i think it, it, i think Lee, i think caleb is a really really lovely uh character one of the best on critical role I, my problem here is trying to decide whether I put him top of A tier or bottom of S tier. Um, cause I'm not quite sure. I, I'm not quite sure I like him enough to put him like up there with Bo and, 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 and Clay and Caduceus. Um, but he is definitely, uh, one of my favorite critical role characters. So for now, I reserve the right to change my mind. I'm going to put him top of A. And next we have, uh, the bard of critical role. I don't think anyone has, uh, aside from Robbie, I don't know if anyone has dared to touch the bard after uh, Scanlan Shorthalt uh, had his way with Critical Role. Um, Scanlan is Sam's first character uh, in, in, in season in the first campaign of Critical Role, and he is a gnome bard, and he goes full out on the bard. He's constantly making like song parodies, inspiring the party inside, in and out of game, uh, and he has a wonderful story about uh, sort of like maturing and growing up to be like a full person instead of just like a character caricature uh, and he has a complicated relationship with the rest of the group that is uh, explored um, mo kind of through Tarion in a way uh, and Scanlan is obviously a great character um, I would put definitely put him up 
uh, in uh, up there with the best of them. Uh, I think I'm going to put him... I don't really have too much more to say about Scanlan, because uh, a lot of the things that I would talk about in specifics uh, require, require some spoilers that I don't want to give out in case there's anybody who's making their way through, making their way through uh, Campaign 1. Um, so I think I'm just going to throw him in S tier and call that good. A tier, I mean. A tier, not S tier. Yasha Nidoran, uh, Ashley's character in Campaign 2. Um, I really like Yasha's aesthetic. Uh, I like the way Ashley plays her as like very, very uh, reserved um, while also having a fun side. Uh, but again, I, there's a bit of a problem with Yasha in my opinion uh, in terms of just Ashley not really being a consistent uh, cast member on the show because she had other commitments. So I don't think she really got as much depth as maybe she deserved, which is unfortunate because she's a really fun uh, character concept. And I think she she does have more screen time, I think, than uh, Pike does. And I think she has a more significant, she has more significant relationships within the party than Pike. So I think I like Yasha more than Pike. I don't think I'd like her enough to put her in A tier, uh, but I think she's on the higher end of B tier. Molly Mock Tea Leaf. Uh, Molly Mock is Taliesin's first character from campaign uh, campaign two, uh, and Molly Mock was a character that everybody really, really loved that I didn't really care for that much. Uh, I, to be perfectly honest, uh, did not connect with what Taliesin was doing with Molly. Um, I thought Molly was kind of annoying, uh, and I kind of think, maybe, maybe a bit of a controversial opinion, but I think that Molly Mock's death was one of the best things that happened to campaign two. Uh, I thought that that made the story so much more interesting in terms of the story, uh, in terms of the Mighty Nine, in terms of the Mighty Nine, um, sort of learning to be a team and come together uh, and deal with their grief together. And I think that's where Caduceus came in. And maybe it's just like sort of a hindsight sort of thing with Molly Mock, uh, because I love Caduceus so much that uh, if Molly Mock had, had lived, then we wouldn't have gotten Caduceus. Uh, and yeah, I'm, and I, I, I found Molly Mock kind of grating, just like I find, I found Ashton kind of grating. And I think that's kind of the point in a lot of ways. I think that's the way Taliesin was playing them, but I'll be honest, I did not enjoy Molly Mock Tea Leaf that much. Uh, I, I thought they were kind of a, a bit of a boring character, uh, obviously a, a very cool aesthetic and was sort of the moral center of the group, but I don't know. I just I just didn't connect with Molly Mock. Uh, I'm gonna put Molly Mock somewhere in the middle of C tier. Next up, we had Ford Stone, Travis's character in Campaign Two. Ford sort of suffers from that same sort of thing that I talked about a bit with uh, uh, Not and with Percy, where he has a really powerful, strong arc in the game, and after that, he's just there and he doesn't do anything else after that. Uh, well, I wouldn't won't say he did nothing. He had a, he had a bit of a, a romance subplot. But overall, he was just sort of there for the rest of it. And, and if, if it were, and if I were to judge him just on his story after his arc, I would put him in C tier. Uh, but the strength of his actual arc with Ukatoa, Ukatoa uh, and Caduceus and the Wild Mother, that is some of the best like character work, I think, in Critical Role. So I think I have to put him at the top of B tier. And last but not least, we have Vaxeldan. We have the edgy sad boy rogue, and I absolutely love Vax. <laughs> I usually really dislike the edgy sad boy trope. I find it, uh, I do find it compelling sometimes, but oftentimes I find it like so, sort of unnecessary. Like, come on, man, you don't actually have that many reasons to be sad. And Vax doesn't have that many reasons to be sad, I guess. He does have some, obviously. Uh, his, his father, he had a very bad relationship with his, with his father, and his mother died when he was very young. Uh, and yeah, his circumstances are very much unfortunate. Unfortunate, But his, but the way Liam plays the edgy sad boy is so much more compelling, I think, than most edgy sad boys, because most of them are, like, just very angry at the world and don't connect with anyone else and anyone else because of that anger uh, and i i don't think that's a particularly good way to go about that i think the way liam goes about it uh is he's sad but he finds a lot of comfort in the people that he loves and the people that love him and like in the connections that he makes around him so he's like an edgy sad boy with like a bit of a found family trope built in uh and that's that that made the edgy sad boy trope work for me so i i think this final character in my tier list, uh, I'm going to put uh, Edgy Sad Boy Vax 
in S tier. So here we go. This is my tier list. Uh, I think that I might do a little bit of shuffling, just a little bit of moving stuff around. Uh, I think, um, let's see. Uh, I think uh, I might put Laudna above Percy. I think maybe Scanlan above Grog. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with like my top sort of five. Uh, Keyleth just beat out my Jester there. Um, but I'm pretty happy with this. I think maybe... I, what I'm thinking about, I might put Tarion above Molly and Ashton. Uh, actually, maybe even above FCG. Uh, other than that, I think I'm pretty happy with this. I don't think Bertrand Bell is like the bottom of the list. I think I'll put Tyrion there. Uh, or not Tyrion, <laughs> Tiberius. Um, but overall, I think this is a pretty good representation of my feelings on the Critical Role uh, uh, characters. And once again, I, I, I just want to reiterate, I don't hate any of these characters. I don't dislike any of them. Uh, just some of them are more to my tastes than others. So there we go. If you enjoy this sort of content, the tier lists, uh, one, you can uh, let me know so I can do more of them for you guys. And also I did make one other tier list where I ranked the Dimension 20 seasons. You can watch that over there. Uh, big shout out to my channel members, uh, Vifa Fox, Caleb Egensberger, Xenon, Ali Asylum, Wellaboot One, FireGen One, and Weston Brad and Paloma Hernando. Thank you so much for your support. It means the world. Uh, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. And if you really enjoy my content, if you want to support me personally, uh, you can become a channel member, get your name shouted out at the end of videos, as well as seeing the videos a couple days early. Thank you for watching.